I kind of have a four man tier at the top. Uh, I have, I, I put him in there and it's kind of like, like you said, I'm kind of waiting to see what shakes up. I have Brooks. I think Brooks is the best running back of the, like the best player. So I, I just have, I just have questions. You know, we have a guy that already is, he tore his ACL in November. He's got kind of the one year production. You know, we have seen guys like Nick Chubb and Frank Gore come into the NFL with, with, you know, ACL tears and, and you know, still be productive. I just don't know when he's going to play as a rookie and be specifically ready. And if you're not ready as a rookie, like in this particular class, like does a team just move on or add more bodies, especially with the way the NFL goes now, right? Like this isn't like taking a guy at pick 20 and saying, we're going to ride or die with this guy through his knee injury. This is taking a guy at pick 50 to 60 and saying, all right, he only played eight games for us last year we better draft another dude still. And like, he's got competition in year two. Uh, but I do think he's like the best all around player. I'm just kind of waiting to see like where the capital is, where the laying spot is. I have Jalen Wright in that group too. And it's only because from a fantasy football stance, I think from a real NFL stance, Jalen Wright's going to have some obstacles in getting a lot of touches, but I think the touches that he could warrant in his apex outcome could be kind of like a thrift store Jameer Gibbs. Like in the in if he hits that apex second, I don't want to just say he is Jameer Gibbs. I'm saying like if he hits this minute threads this needle uh and kind of kind of get there. Cause I think he's gonna catch more passing NFL. He's just an explosive player, but he's never gonna get in, in between the tackle work. He's never going to be a guy that like basically is like pushing for 15 to 20 carries. And then I have Benson in that group too. Benson's probably my least favorite player from like a player perspective, but like did he's he fit he checks all the boxes right like he's he's 215 pounds he's super fast like he he has enough production he's probably gonna get drafted highly so I'm just like so that's enough like that's really what it is it's the process right yeah. and an interesting <laughs> thing with Jalen Wright and something that I want to talk to you about because for me sometimes Rich I'm truly trying to I, again I think one of the bigger edges in dynasty is understanding or at least having a clue how everybody else is going to react right how is how is the dynasty community as a whole how will we react if certain outcomes happen so let's just just vibe with me for a second rich Blake Corm he gets out there and he's on the field day one he's getting 13 carries but it's inefficient 13 for 47 50 yards here he's just grinding out work he's on the field but not really producing. Jalen Wright goes out there and he's playing behind James Conner, clearly the second running back. Mm -hmm. He's getting six touches, but on those six touches, he's ripping off 15 yards. There was a 32 yard reception. There was another 11 yard run. People will want, people will want that. Like people, fantasy gamers will be like, oh crap. I've got a poor man's Devon A. Chan, a poor man's Jameer Gibbs. I I want that guy over the grinder. I, I can see a world in which that explosiveness, that speed in the right system, it just gets the fantasy football gamers blinkers going crazy mm-hmm. that they got to have the next Keaton Mitchell or, or or a player like that. And that's, it's speed. Uh, you know, the, the need for speed, people like that, that, it, that explosiveness, the fact that it doesn't take 22 opportunities for him to crack my lineup. So I, I understand why you like Jalen Wright and I like him as well. 